Hi, everybody. We are back. Um, welcome again. If you missed our last one, my name is Maggie Johnson, and welcome to Adobe Live. Um, this is my good friend, Ted. He oh. is a digital artist who focuses on photo manipulation, and in all of our professional opinions, he is a Photoshop master. Oh, so we have lots to learn from him. Um, yeah. Ted, how are you today? Good, good. Very excited to be here. Yes. And then, you know, back with everybody. So it's like, yeah, thanks for having me again. Yes. So as always, please feel free to drop any thoughts or questions you have in the chat. We are both eager to answer those. And yeah, why don't you tell us about yeah. what we're going to work on today? So um, today we're going to work on something interesting. Um, I'm going to create something in uh, Adobe Photoshop, which is going to be this file right here. Uh, I'm going to show you the process how to make this. And then we're going to bring to Adobe Express and animate it and then um, do some like design so you would kind of see like an ASMR version of the art. So, which I saw that like a few weeks ago on Photoshop's channel, they share like ASMR. So these are like some of the um, the one that I have made so far. So um, let me know if you guys can hear the audio, but just like, you know, kind of like a interesting one that I see like I can break down my steps yes. in editing and then also do like an interesting sound, like a Foley or just like, oh, this is a, what the mountain sounds like. This is what yes. the cloud sounds like, you know? And before I had to use uh, Photoshop and screen record or oh. doing the layer, like timeline on there to uh, record this. But then I was like, oh, like I forgot like on Adobe Express, there's animation. You can actually yeah. drop the whole PSD file onto there and then do the animation per layer. So I bet it's that a pretty fun your, thing. I bet that chopped your workflow yeah. a lot, didn't so it? So you would see like I actually had pre-animated the whole thing. So at the very end of the stream, you get to see the final looking of this. So this is like pretty fun. Um, on this video, it's very Ooh. interesting because like um, someone like so is like, oh, I never thought about like how the moon will sound like. I was like, yeah. I never thought about it too till I have to animate it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I can only imagine the sounds yeah. that you have to try to decipher for that. <laughs> okay, so first let's go to Adobe Stock. Um, it is right here. So usually, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but I'll go to Adobe Stock and there's like the free sections um, that you can download a free image to use. So mainly I use this is because I, I want you guys to download the same photo and then to like practice and add it with me, right? Um, yeah. I would love to share the PSD file if we can find a way. Um, but yeah, so these are some of the, um, the photo we're gonna be needing. So this is like kind of like present writing camo and deserts and stuff. So I have them, all of them right here. So these will be the photo we're gonna be used. Um, feel free to pause the Ooh. string so you can see all the numbers on there. So you can download these are all free. Yeah. And then we are gonna go on to Photoshop. You That's know? awesome. You can do it right along with us today if you yeah. want. Or later, if you, you know, have oh, yeah. time later. Whoever's today. watching this later, you can see. Um, so I personally love just dragging the photo directly onto the canvas because yeah. That automatically converted to smart object. Yeah. Right. So for those of you who are not familiar, uh, smart object. I don't. Do you have a better way to explain it? I just know like it kind of like keep it smart, but like <laughs> yeah. it keep the resolutions and or like all the details added and you put on into it. So you yes. can always double click and then go and add it the original photo. Yes. It's like it's kind of like a group, right? Yeah. I I would think that's a good way to describe it. It allows it to be manipulated without being destroyed, I guess yeah. you could say maybe. Yeah, not destroyed too much, yeah. right? So I can hold like comment T and like, you know, just like transform into like as large or as small as I want, but it will always keep like a high resolution, you know? Yeah. Which is uh, um, something uh, for me, because I'll usually like turn my R to print. So I oh, need like okay. everything to be like super sharp and details, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to build our foreground. What size do you usually work on? What canvas oh, yeah. size? Oh yeah, so usually... canvas size. I usually do for uh, Instagram, so like like four by five okay. ratio. So I do sixteen by twenty inch. Uh, you can see like these are all different file that I tried it out. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> for uh, Instagram story or reels is like nine by sixteen. Uh, I put on inch and three hundred uh, DPI resolution. So three hundred like, DPI. Okay. Yeah, it's making like super sharp, but yeah. not super large, right? Yeah. And I can always resize it because they're all in smart object. Yeah. And you know, can export for like TIFF, you know, like for printing. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's see. I'm just gonna do. Usually, I'll use W quick selection tool to remove the sky. Um, you could also just go on like. Uh, Edit it. No, sorry. Select and then do the sky. 
Oh, um, brilliant. I yeah. didn't know that, actually. Select well, let's try it. Because sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't work well. Okay. You know? But most of the time it works like accident. Um, see? Look! Yeah. Oh my gosh, One it cool. did it in just a second. No, That's amazing. Right? This is like lazy Photoshop with me. <laughs> <laughs> not lazy, smart way to smart. work on Photoshop. Work smarter, yeah. not harder. Exactly. Yes. We have lots of hellos from Catherine, Cody, Ivan, Ali, it looks like. Hello, hello. hello everybody. So, like, one thing I like and also not dislike but challenge is that when you do selecting sky, right, it does a very fine job. Yeah. But that also means that it will select, like, a little bit of the bottom of the uh, the foreground or elements of yeah. that. Um, so it kind of feathers, I guess? Kind of feathering. So when you invert it, right, um, it's like if you put anything behind... It actually looks pretty good because it's mm. blending more naturally. Oh, um, yeah. But for me, uh, I like to keep it like super sharp, just because I know, like we're gonna. Uh, oops, we're not replacing the uh, sky. We're actually just gonna put something behind it. Got you. Great. Okay. So, oh yeah, all the short key is like when you hold Shift and then whatever short key the tool you do, you can like rotate. Around the the tool. Oh, I don't brilliant! Know if you know that, yeah. Yeah. So it was you did shift. Shift. Yeah, and then W, w is the selection tool, right? So got you. Holding shift, it rotates around. So just like this, real quick. And then yeah. We're gonna shift W, everybody. If you're not using down. hotkeys, it'll change your life. So make yeah. sure <laughs> to start studying up on those. So the other things I usually after I select the sky, um, I can mask it out, but it will leave like a very tiny line here. Um, so just. Make sure you clear that off. Oh you know, yeah. Brushing off. I'm using the uh, the brush tools. On the I guess layer that's mask. a benefit to using not the select guy. I guess. Yeah. If so you just yeah. So that's a different thing. Yeah, yeah. So just making sure everything's clear. Right. Okay. And then so the concept I have is this person is riding a camel in the desert, and then there's like a giant moon. Yeah. That's on the ground that he's just passing by. Right. Yeah. So obviously it's not like super original concept, but it's just something fun that we can all practice with. No, it's great. It's dramatic. It's good. It's attractive. Yeah. We love it. I like surrealism and concept art and video games. Yeah. So these are like the stuff like I enjoy making. You know. Oh yeah. Um, so that's. I could see. totally see your work being in video games. Like I could totally see. Oh, that would be that so cool. Translation. I was like, oh, that would be like so cool to design like a video art world. Yeah. But like you everyone should do who, it. Oh, but Let's everyone who it. work in the industry are so like expert level already. Oh. I'm just like, I can compete. I need more practice. Oh, practice. I see. I need more practice because they're so good. Um, okay, so what I did just now, I just moved these. Uh, stars with the background to behind this layer so let's rename this so you guys can see full ground and sky there you go it's doing that so it's easier to understand what goes where and then if i need to add it to something you know just oh yeah it's right there yeah okay and we're gonna do a little adjustment layer right here it's right if you is it on this window adjustment so i think you yes. can go on window adjustments and this will pop out so it's like the uh hue saturation layer hue and saturation got it yeah options and then clipping mask is the same thing right here yeah that was and a good thing that you mentioned i know um a lot of creatives i know um it's hard to keep your workspace manageable so i um, mean if you ever lose a tool you can go to window and find that tool very easily yeah um, so it's just like um, I don't know if a lot of people use that, but I love it right there. Oh, no, yeah. I mean like this section of so like the oh, oh yeah, you. adjustment. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that is what. <laughs> I got you. I'm like yes, adjustment, adjustment, but adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing too complicated. So um, oh, very nice. Yeah, I'll probably like desaturate. So it's like very blue hue on the mm -hmm. back, which looks really cool. It creates a contrast, but I like them to like kind of blending more. So. I'll probably even just do like a quick color adjustment and maybe turn it a little bit more red-ish. Oh, yeah. Warm, warm color. I feel so, like that definitely yeah. helps it work with the, you know, foreground that you have yeah. there. Okay, so we got Color matching wise. When it was blue, blue, it was a little distracting almost. Yeah, so there, there is this little edge, but we'll fix that later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> later, later. Oh, we'll, Push it to we'll later. We'll probably cover it somehow. Okay, <laughs> so now we're going to add our moon. Well, let me know, chat, if I'm going too fast, because, you know, like, I kind of, like, practice this in my yes. head. Like, you can do this in your sleep, probably. No, not probably not, but <laughs> <laughs> the, that's where I draw my uh, canvas and concept. You yeah. Know? Okay. So. Yeah, let us know if you have any questions about um, what he's doing. Oh, this might be a good thing to mention. I yeah. see that you created a layer mask, mm -hmm. um, and that's how he was editing things. I know maybe you did already mention that, but... 
that is a good way to erase without erasing. Is that right? Yeah. So instead of let's see, instead of like actually directly editing on the photo, um, I want to always like. For example, if I'm like five steps done, right? I want to go back to like, oh, I miss this little edge right here. Or if I accidentally like erase too much, right? So if I if I found something like that, right? Yeah. And it's very easy just to go back to that layer mask and then brush it back, you know? Yes. So I can always like fix onto that and erase things instead of like, you know, the deconstructed way, right? Yes. It's like, yeah, how to yeah. go back in. So this is like a, a method like I prefer to work with is like this. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Non-destructive because we non don't have time that to... Yes, I got you. <laughs> I got you. It's you. <laughs> the, we don't have time to redo things, you know? We don't want yeah. to waste our time having to redo things all the time. It's just like easier to control things, right? Because yeah. like, otherwise, like, if you... Like it happens to me before that I made a mistake. I yeah. didn't see till very end. Oh. I was so like, d- it's oh, so crushing. Because yeah. then oh. now I have to go all the way back to find the source file yeah. to put it on there. Because like, um, if I send this file to someone else, like they get to um, have everything too, right? Yeah. So like they don't have to like look for the original file and fix it themselves. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we have a question. Is there yes. a key combination for adjustment layers? So are there, there any is, specific right? that you? Let me see, because I know they're in layer layer styles. It's in here. I don't know if there's a short key for that. Yeah, I'm not sure, actually. It's usually it's on, under layer, right, with like yeah. new adjustment layer and stuff. So I'm not sure if there's like a short key. Yeah, I, I know there is. I don't know. Maybe, I know, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe it doesn't exist. <laughs> I know there's a way to create your own. Mm-hmm. And so oh, I'm wondering. Really? Well, okay, maybe I'm speaking too soon. If you don't, maybe I'm being wrong. But I'm oh, no, pretty sure I'm there's a way there. to, yeah. <laughs> to shift your hotkeys. So you might be able to go into your settings. And then I think it's shortcuts or short keys. Yeah. And maybe so. you can look there. But anyways. Yeah, if you go to Windows and Adjustments, then it will pop up over there. Yeah, like so if you go on Window, Adjustment, this is like my workspace. I yeah. like it like this way because um, you have like the preset and then all these like single adjustments, which is like these are my favorite sections just yeah. to have. Um, so I can just move my mouse over on the top right and click to use, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I have my layer on the right side and then this, this window right here, the Navigator, um, for me is like, when I'm probably having to use, like when I'm working on something all the time, I only look at these little sections. Yes. I need to step away to see what the whole picture looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. Right? But instead of like walking away, now I can just kind of like see the whole composition here, no matter how close I am working. Oh, yeah. I can see like, oh, where should I put the moon, right? So I'm just gonna turn this to screen real quick. Like, where should I put the moon and how big it is? And instead of like keep going like back and forth, it's, yeah. I have it on my right side window. You can see you know? the whole thing, that's yeah. awesome. So that's like a very uh, convenient like um, window for me. I learned I found a concept artist. Oh, so I love I was it. Like, what is that? He's like, oh, Navigator, you gotta have it on. I was like, okay, say I, less. I need this, yeah, <laughs> say less. You guys should try using the Adjustments tab and the Navigator tab in your workspace. Yes, and then uh, I have my history on here, so it's like, you know, you can go all the way back or like see anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the bottom is like the property. So it's like uh, when I have adjustment layers, I can click on it and then the property is like help me to adjust everything that I need to, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So just like doing this and that, right? Clipping on that. Um, yeah, does your workspace looks like mine or like very different? Very similar. I very have, similar. Nice. yeah, I don't have history as much. Um, I don't feel like I look at that as much, but I do more graphics than Photoshop editing, I would say. So that might change, you know? That's true, I actually yeah. do use adjustments quite a bit. I'm glad. Nice. I don't know a lot of people that do. I know some people are levels people. Oh yeah, levels. You know, levels are hard. Levels I think are levels hard. People are like higher level than me. You know? Yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys use levels or adjustments? I know they're not totally interchangeable, but I feel like those are generally. Because <sighs> level, you gotta do this like highlights and shadows. The red. I was like. Uh, Somebody needs to come teach us the lesson on how yeah. to better use levels. Like but. I'm a more simple person. I was like, yeah. oh, I can do this and that instead of like look at the graph. I was yes. Like, I'm not. I'm just not gonna do levels. But levels are great. They uh, are great. If you're a master of levels, great job, you know. <laughs> also, layers is a must. I have layers on everything always. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anyone work without layers. I know. <laughs> if you do, monster. you're the stronger person. I know. Yeah. Monster. You're the chosen one, you know. I, I can you know, you're, uh, you're, you, you're better than me. <laughs> <laughs> if you work without layers, you're the chosen one because yeah. you're above us. Okay, so let's jump back to the concept of uh, working on Moon. Um, so there's like few different options you can do 
the moon blending, right? The one that uh, most ones more common that everybody know is kind of changing the uh, blending layer. Um, so you can just put it onto your screen, right? Lighting, screens, all this. Screen's like my favorite one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you have like a darker background, it make the object like bright. So oh, it's like yeah, kind of good like to glowing, know. glowing um, style. So this is like the one I usually like to use. However, um, sometimes you can see like it's transparent. So mm -hmm. you can see like what's behind and we don't, well, there's a few other ways you can fix it. Yeah. Um, by either create a new layer and then you paint it like a darker color underneath it. So oh, there's, like, interesting. Object. That's one way to do it. Uh, but in this case, uh, I want to have more editing later on. So I'm actually going to create uh, a layer mask and then just select the moon only. Okay. Right? And you might be thinking like, oh, some easy way with the select tool is like you can just select the black background or just the moon, right? Yeah. But if you do that with this toolbar, by the way, I love the toolbar. It's so easy with oh, like yeah. all the hockey right here. Oh, yeah. Um, but if you do something like that, you'll notice the edge is like very, what do you call that? Edgy? Yeah. <laughs> the the edge edges is very are edgy. a little edgy. Uh, the edge zigzag, edgy. you know, yeah. not super smooth. And obviously there's many ways you can fix this, but a very quick, um, easier way that I personally like to do is just to create a circle and then mask it, right? Oh, so yeah. So you can absolutely. drag it, hold shift to hold that, or you can do, I think it's option and shift, and select somewhere around the center and then just draw a circle like from the center of the uh, circle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so option, I think, okay. yeah, option shift. So maybe it's alt shift on PC. Yeah. I'm not sure, but try it out. It's either control or alt. So, and then do that, right? So this give me like a very smooth circle edge. Well, this, I guess this is where you can argue like, oh, the moon is not completely circle or not, but in my world it is. <laughs> oh, we have somebody that says groups is the most. Is groups? Yes, group is the most. Groups Like right is... here, group. Oh, group. Oh, layer yeah. groups. Yes, right? of course. That's, that's I'm assuming layer groups? <laughs> yes. Let yes. us know. Yeah. David, let us know if you meant something other than that. Um, but we're assuming layer groups. Yeah, group absolutely. So um, obviously, if I wasn't doing live or wasn't turning the file to someone else, my layer might look like crazy. Yeah. But I try <laughs> my best to um, clear, like simplify it right now because yeah. I noticed that sometime when I went back to work on like some old RPs, it's really nice for yeah. the future me to have a clean version to work on instead oh, yeah. of like, what is this layer doing? <laughs> what is affecting this layer? Where's that brush coming from? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Especially when you do something like, like you were talking about drawing, you know, a darker area underneath the moon. If yeah. you just had like a dark spot, you're like, well, why did I do that? Why do yeah. I have just a random <laughs> like, dark spot? Where did it come from, you know? Okay, yes, David said gr layer groups. Yes. yes. R a must, 100%. Okay, so... Two thumbs up. Thanks, David. <laughs> so we're going to put this moon somewhere around there. Well, obviously not there, oh, but there, right? Perfect. So the reason why I put in there, so it's because, in a way, so let's think about this, right? So if I put it in this foreground right here, right, that also means that I have to draw some lights right here, probably underneath. I'm just doing some, yeah, some lights here, some lights there, right? And then yeah. there's going to be some shadows. Like, imagine how a glowing ball is on a piece of scent, right? Yeah. But to make it more interesting or easier for me personally is to hide it behind right here, behind this hills right here. So it's just like oh, hiding yeah. right there. So it looks like there's a depth of field. There's like layers onto it, right? So That's it's something. still on the sand without being... Great the front face. is being kind of covered, so you right. can create like a more dramatic lighting. Right. Um, that's something I notice on my artwork too. Like sometimes I do feel like my designs are pretty flat, quote unquote flat. You know, so it's a very similar perspective. You go on my Instagram, you can see like this is the style I have. But yeah. looking at other like concept artists, I was just like, oh, I want to learn how to make it more layers. Yeah. Right? Like more dimensional. See, yeah, more dimensional. Yeah. It's like a depth, like going back in there instead of just everything flat, right? Yeah. So that's something I noticed since college. It's like 10 years ago, I noticed I have that problem. Uh, I, don't know. I don't think anyone's critiquing. <laughs> I don't think anyone's saying. I, I'm still haunted by my professor. <laughs> this is flat. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know I'm what to tell you. I'm trying my best, you know? Yeah, she, she, she gave us an example of design. Um, just imagine, like, don't make the zebra. Like, she, I don't know why she used the example of zebra, but don't make it just look at flat, like laughing, right? Make it look like... Uh, a quarter off, oh, right? Yeah. Like uh, something more dynamic, like three stuff. quarter views. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. You know? So I always remember that, even though I st still make the same mistakes. Sometimes. Shout out to your professor. She's still professor. in your brain on the yeah. daily. Okay, so you're selecting. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, haunting you. <laughs> in a good way. I love. I love my professor. Oh They're yeah. Great. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm selecting this part. Oh, somebody says this, or Jacob says this stock photo reminds me of the Mac OS. Um, I oh yes, say it. the um, the desktop. Yeah. That update that was a few updates ago. It does look like that. It's it kind does. of. It was kind of moody. Sorry, I, I was I was using um, what do you call that? The quick selection tool, and I was trying to like draw over it, but it kept disappearing. So oh, I'm just gonna hand mask it. Oh, awesome! So you are still selecting, but you're yeah. just doing it with a brush. Oh yeah. Okay. So let me talk about that. So not to interrupt your flow. Oh yeah, yeah I forgot. So what I'm doing right now is that um, after I select it, I press Q. It enter this quick select mode, I believe. Yeah. Um, so the, I set it to, you can do it on the setting and preference. Um, so the part that's red means it's not selected. And the part that doesn't have the red color on means it's selected. Yeah. Right, so obviously using the brushing tool and then different opacity, you can select different amount of it, right? Yeah, um, that's so helpful, because <clears throat> especially when you're working like dark on dark, I'm sure it gets hard to like, yeah. you know, sometimes see where you're working. Mm -hmm. So you can see on the uh, opacity right here, this number, you probably don't didn't notice that earlier, but I'm pretty much like using the keyboard, pressing the number one to all the way to zero, right? On your keyboard, one, two, three, four, five. So it give you like different percentage of the opacity. So like two is 20%, six is 60, zero is 100. If you want to do 5%, just press zero five or zero three, right? That give you that. So all this, Give him like a faster way to control the flow. Oh, so yeah. I can just do like that, and then you see like the difference on, on that, right? That is so helpful. I am gonna add that to my flow. I didn't know about the opacity changes. Oh, yeah, you can also select the layer and press that number, it will just jump to the opacity on uh, the layer. So that is so helpful. I don't know how many hours I've wasted taking that <laughs> little slider. Do you know yeah, the slider. You opacity don't want, like, slider. Tunnel, you know? so just, like, <laughs> yeah. That's why I switched to the tablets because I want to reduce the stress on yes. my arm. Probably every artist's nightmare, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so pressing B, and then I have a, a shortcut set on my pen, but I think it was a command shift and right click or something. So oh, it changed okay. the branches size. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if I move up and down, it changed the opacity. Left and right changed the size. You know? Yes. But I know you can use brackets also. Is that true? Yeah, bracket bracket works. So if it's I more clicking. Yeah, bracket. You can just hold on there. Yeah. Yeah. So just do that and then the world I, of hotkeys. Yeah, make your life easier. Yes. Um, pressing R because like sometimes like I'm not really good at drawing like a straight line. So sometimes I just press R to rotate it. Oh yeah. And then just draw like a straight line is like sometimes easier for me. It depends on like you know and then you can press C again just to like crop it, not actually crop it, but it will redirect that straight to oh, the original yeah. Kevin canvas. Oh yeah, rotate view, guys, is the yeah. R that checks out. Let's Sorry. see. This is Let's like the see. not so excited part, but it's pretty excited for me. <laughs> oh, Sorry. what? Oh, we have a question, is that okay? Yes, of course, um, ask me anything. It says, what image size do you like to work with when you're choosing your stock images? So do you look for a specific one, like a specific size, or do you just search all images? I think I search all images because most of it is pretty high resolution. Okay. So let's see, if we jump to this, right, um, most of it is like pretty big. Oh, wow, yeah, that's very big, yeah, 5,000 by 3,000. Yeah, so you can also, well, actually, if you, because if you use the actual license one, you can download like a preview, but the preview was like smaller size anyway. Yeah. But yes, yeah, like most of the stock on here are really like high resolution. Um, there should be a little search bar somewhere. Filter or something. Yeah, here, let me just go back to Yeah, that. so um, if you didn't catch that, he is very open to using all different sizes because the resolutions are usually so high. Mm -hmm. um, so you can always adjust. Based yeah, you see, that. oh, I just went on the Adobe stock, yeah. under the free category, type desert. There's a lot of amazing, beautiful photo that you can use. Uh, and then on the left side, there's a filter, right? So I click image and then go on a uh, subcategory. You can pick photos. And then uh, you can even, this is my favorite part, like the generate AI. Oh, yeah. You can pick like, hey, you want AI or no AI at all. Oh, that's an excellent filter. I didn't know that. You can keep all options open or you can exclude generative AI imagery. So if you want yeah, something. Yeah, because like uh, in a way you can use Firefly to generate the landscape you want, right? So yeah. um, when I had a lot of credit, 
I accidentally licensed some Firefly or like other AI photo on there, I was like, oh wait, like I can make that. But yeah. <laughs> I need like super high detail, crisp yeah. like landscape. Like this one is so beautiful. Oh, know? that's so beautiful. Yeah, and then you can change like orientation too. And then um, all this like cool thing you can set on the left side. So we won't go too details on that. Yeah. But yeah, so most of the time, like let's just click a random one. Like the resolution is pretty high on here. Yeah. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. But I have worked on like other things too. Like sometimes like the um, I was trying to use sharpen. Like you can go to filter, sharpen. You can use sharpen or sharpen more, or you can create like a um, high pass and then use the overlay oh, layer yeah. on the top to sharpen thing. And then just as long as you use like smart objects, sometimes you can just like make it bigger yeah. without like make it too blurry. Right? Yeah. So that's a, a fun way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. I hope that answered your question. Yes. So what I did just now is uh, I select that there. And then I pretty much, here, let me show you what I did. Because <laughs> I know we were, we were talking when that happened. I know, so, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> uh, That's totally fine. Um, I forgot to explain. So now I have the part I wanted in red. So I got to make sure that I invert the layer mask by holding Command I or Control I. So now this part is the one, uh, the part I want, right? Command um, I and he inverted the layer yeah. mask. Cool. Okay, sorry. Let me... It's very satisfying to watch you do this. You're so fast and in a good way, like appropriate speed. But Thank you. It's like watching uh, a painting go down right in front of our eyes. Okay, so this is the part where it gets tricky. So basically, I don't want to do like Control C and Control V because that would just be like a... Yeah. Um, I then have to turn this to convert to a smart object, so that's like extra work. Um, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to drag this layer and then hover it over this plus sign on the bottom right. And then you let it go, so it duplicate the layer that you have already. Oh, awesome. But we want to make sure to delete the layer mask we had before because it's duplicate the whole layer mask. Yeah. And then now we, our selection is still keep on the left side, right? That's awesome, and yeah. Then we click mask, and then now you have the smart object with the new layer mask. And Look. then we have this from part. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's magic, I swear. Yeah. That's so, a good trick also is dragging it over the plus sign. I also didn't... Yeah. Uh, what you that. can also do is hold Command J or uh, oh, Control J. J is just duplicate the whole layer. Yeah. So um, that would be faster. But sometimes, I don't know why my brain's program just like, oh, yeah, I can just do that, you know. I think sometimes <laughs> you just, you start with a workflow and it kind of ingrains in your brain and then you just, you roll with it. You get yeah, I guess I can just do Command J. It's the same thing. So I was just testing. I'll make sure the selection is still there. Okay, so now we did that, right? And then we have our Moom. So we... This is called foreground copy, but I could just call it full foreground or just like uh, front foreground, or I'm just gonna do FF because it's like yeah. the, the front the is most, one. The, <laughs> the most frontist. <laughs> the frontist. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so then we're gonna drag our moon behind it. So now you see it give that layers feeling of that. And then we can go in to make sure, like, clear out this little thing. Sorry, I'm just gotta make sure. I'm shrinking down the size, the brush size. There you go. Somebody just asked if you could repeat what your hotkey was for changing your brush size again, because um, he said he uses brackets. But what was the other one that you do? Let me try it. Um, um, uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yes. Command you said you have a shortcut shift, with your pen. Right click? No way. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I used to know also. It's something. Maybe. Oh, wait. Option. Oh, there you go. I think it's option, control, and then right click. Option, oh, control. Oh, no, sorry. Option, control, options, and then left click while you hold on it and drag left and right. Okay, so and option. And then up and down also changes it too. You see the roundness? Oh, yeah. Oh, you the hardness. You see the hardness change it when you drag up and down, and then left and right goes to the di uh, diameter. Okay, awesome. Thank you for bringing control, that out. Control, option. So it should be control, alt, and then left click on PC. Okay. So try that. Yes, control option, left to right, control option, left click, yes. left, right changes the brush size, yes. and up, down changes the hardness. Yes. Cool. We got there. We so, got there. <laughs> um, if you have a tablet like me, um, I create the short key on the, the top key right here. So when I do the one click holding it, it does the uh, control options for me. Oh, yeah. So that's when uh, I can do that by dragging. I'm sure that tablet. saves you so much time. Yeah, you yeah, probably I'm do that all day. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had a program. Every time I got a new PC and stuff, I was like, how, how do I do this again? I have yeah. to go on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. the good good questions because now I remember. I was like, oh, yeah, this is how you do it. So let Back me know if that roots. works. Yeah, that should work. Oh, um, option control shift. Somebody else answered it for us too. Yay. Thank you guys. Thank you for helping me.
Okay, back to the moon. Back to the moon here. Um, so this is something I do like trying to find the center. Obviously, you can use uh, Control R or Command R to find like the ruler, um, and then you can hold on it to drag the lines. But to make it faster, I just press C, use Crop Tool, hit Enter, so I can just drag this directly to the center and then escape. Oh yeah. So now I can tell that like, okay, if my moon's in the center or not. I kind of want to do like run there. And then moving that away, maybe a little bit lower where the where the moon is. A little more tucked away. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Now you see there's a little little thing we can fix, right? So it's good too that we have the layer on. So all we have to do is just to fix that little layer in there. Clean okay. up the edgy edges. Let me save the file in case something happened. Yes. <laughs> Always save your Ugh. file. <laughs> Ugh, the panic of losing a file. I'm I so know. thankful that I work a lot in Illustrator, and I'm so thankful that if Illustrator crashes, it has an awesome recovery, you know, program. Yeah, Photoshop I think they all has do. it. Yeah, they'll yeah. do right now. And then um, you can also turn on the autosave on Photoshop. Oh, yeah. Um, I should do that. Why haven't I done that? But I just prefer like manual like pressing and just like, you know, I'm paranoid. I was like, I got to make sure I saved it. Like, yeah. how would I know? It's You'll like save when, it anyway. See it's like when you leave the house, you forgot, like, did I turn the stove on? Yeah. You know, just like crazy. Okay. We got to speed up a little bit here. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay. So now we have this. Obviously, I want to put a little person in front of it right there. And then I want to put like rocks on the left and right side. So give it like a devil feel, right? So... You are definitely achieving here. the depth that you were talking about. This does not lack depth at all. Uh, thank you. So I'm just going to click this real quick. Oh, awesome. He said he's, David said he's going to implement that into his workflow. So I pretty much just did go on here, quick select, and then get that rock because I just won the rock on the back. So now I have this, layer it, name it. So I'm going to drag it behind the moon. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Ta -da. And then we can resize this rock right here. I'm going to do like eh, maybe even bigger. All right. Why not? Bigger is better. Bigger uh, just to make sure it kind of looks good. Someone says you guys are basically talking to the boom, talking to the moon by Bruno Mars. <laughs> are we allowed to sing it? I don't know what's the what's the <laughs> you don't copyright want me to sing, on the. Uh, I'm not a good singer, but I'm just saying like you know. Oh, the copyright. copyright. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sing singing should be fine because that's like parody, right? So um, what I'm doing right now is also I use the quick select. So basically, because on the original photo, the background is like blue, um, so you can just use magic wand to one click to erase the the background. And then since mine still, you can still kind of see the edges. Oh, so yeah. I'm just selecting that again. Make sure I'm on the layer mask and then double check the area I'm selected. Switch to the black brush and then I can hide. Whoops. Uh, don't Select you the it. wrong layer, right? <laughs> layer mask. Layer mask. <laughs> layer mask. There you go. Then I can make sure it's more clear, right? So you can still kind of see like right here, but. Little, little things. Little easy bit, to fix. you know. I'm just going to boop and then doop, doop. <laughs> There you go, perfect. And then I'm gonna duplicate it by Control J, come in T, and then flip it, and then move it back here. But I don't want you to be able to tell that's the same rock. So what I'm gonna do is to make it oh wow even bigger. <laughs> so that's the same yeah, it's one. The same you just rock. copied it. Yeah. You can't tell though. It changes it a lot. I feel just like. You want to figure out the way to hide it, you know? Yeah. So just like, okay, like... The distinctive. Yeah, the more I had, the less you can tell what is going on. So now your brain just automatically triggers. It's like, oh, it's just like a wall behind yeah. the moon, you know? It's continued. We okay, do have another sorry. question for you. Yes. Have you found a faster way to correct level shadows and color balance? Level um, shadow, color balance. I guess maybe that's what you were talking about with adjustments. Like, you tend to lean into adjustments to fix those issues. Okay, so I don't have... A good example, but I can show you exactly how I do it. It's my personal way. So let's try. Let's actually try on the right side of the rock, right? Um, ba -ba -ba -bun. So these are the two adjustment layer I like to use. So one is actually it's two to three. But let's start with hue saturation and then color balance right here. You see these two icon. 
um, is those assets right here, right? So you want to click that. So usually I like to kind of like desaturate it a little bit because like the um, the layer you're using has like different color tones and stuff, right? So I desaturate a little bit so I can add more color back into it by either pen it with the different layer, click onto it, or just quick color balance. There's mid-tone highlights and shadow. Yeah. So you can select all right here. So um, it's more so, intentional. Yeah, so I can like kind of like make it warmer color, trying to see like, okay, what do I need to do to make sure like these matches like the, the bottom layer, right? Or the front layer. So yeah. what you're doing with that, and then if you're happy with it, and then do like sit saturate because if it's saturated more maybe it looks better maybe not right this also yeah. change the, the highlights and shadow so these are like the first two i would do and then from there let me hide this too um from there right you can see this is something i was actually teaching a student about um if you sample the darkest part in the foreground it looks like that color let's see where that color, right? And then you can sample the darkest part of this, the object you want to blend in yeah. to see, right? They're actually pretty similar. They already, are similar. Right? So, like, you want to kind of match those two colors, like the shadow and highlight, as close as possible. And the faster way to do, which is, like, I don't know if a lot of people use this or not. Um, so, you click this icon right here, right? Create a new fill or adjustment layer. You click it, <clears throat> and you go all the way to the bottom selective color so this is like kind of like my secret weapon or my favorite tool to use yeah um so you click that and then <clears throat> what this could do is similar as the same way you use levels and every other thing else um you can do black neutral neutrals and whites these three change the shadow and then the um highlight so you can you see like it attack all the uh the oh, black wow, <clears throat> yeah. on there and then you can also add different tones directly to that but not affecting um the other colors on there not colors like the the shadows and highlights right oh my gosh that's awesome so you can do that right so obviously you can say okay this one is like more reddish yellow do that and it was like okay something else doesn't look right then you can go on to the neutral neutral does see it leaves the, the the shadows alone oh yeah so now you can control that to match that and then doing that you can also go to highlight. That's like a different thing. So highlight or neutral sometimes doesn't always show. That's the other thing. So you need like um, the layer if it has like a really bright color on there, right? Yeah. Um, then you'll be able to see the difference on there. But usually doing the the black and neutral affect the um, is the same as mid tone shadows and highlight. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Without having to use the dodge the and burn yeah. and all that too. <laughs> Without dodge and burns and levels. So. The ideal best way is to use all of those to get you like the perfect way, like you yeah. know, for you. Uh, my workflow, like these three, are my favorite to use because I can just change like slowly and then to like. Sometimes I might overdo it, just have the same layers, but like on top of each <laughs> <Yeah>. other. <laughs> so when it gets yes, too crazy, yeah, fifteen percent and then another fifteen yeah. percent and then. <laughs> so yeah. I'll go back and like clean out the levels. It's like okay, I turn this off. It's like okay, I don't really need that layer right yeah. there, right? So yeah, so again, it's right here, go down, selective color, that's my favorite tool to use. That's so helpful. Yeah, obviously you can throw on like a gradient map or like a color lookup just overall to cover that track. Yeah. Um, but selective color is my favorite tool, so try it, give it a shot. It's very similar as level. Um, it does all the same thing. Yeah, it's non-destructive. It's that's the same awesome. as using level, right? But if this thing scares you, um, the selected color won't scare you that yes. much. <laughs> so yes. yeah, I hope that helped answering you. Yeah, maybe give that a try and see if that helps with yeah. and your then workflow. We gonna we gonna do something interesting. So I'm gonna group the rocks and then sorry, move clip the adjustment layer to the group, which you can do that too. So I'm gonna name this rock. Oops, that's not how you used to be a spell rock. <laughs> eh, whatever. It's okay. We're not here to spell, we're here to design, right? <laughs> Oh, okay. also, Ted, just so you know, we're about halfway. Okay, we're halfway. We got time, don't yes, worry. Yes, plenty of time. So this is where I start to paint light into my art, right? So I'm just going to turn everything dark because it's like in the in the background, the, the sky's light, right? So it's like think about like if you take a photo of the stars, it's going to be dark in the back and then you kind of see foreground because the light source is our moon, right? Yeah. Um, so then I'm going to paint this back on here. Okay, so to explain that, basically I turn it brightness all the way down and then go on to layer mask on it and then just hide the part, right? So it looks like there's a light coming out from, from the moon, right? And yeah. then the same thing, I can clip it and then do like more and then 
So once again, it. using those adjustments and layer masks. Yeah, it is kind of like, you can also go into like details of like, oh, there's like stronger highlights, right? By like creating a better contrast, painting on the shadow, yeah. those darkness and stuff. So it really looks like, oh, like the moon is right there glowing, right? So yeah. that's like a quick way to do it. Um, you can also group this whole thing so you know like, that's your super rocky layer. Super rocky. <laughs> super rocky, I got you. Um, okay, then we're gonna jump into the moon, right? How do you make a moon glow? So there's obviously many different ways you can do it. Um, one thing I, I like to do is creating a brush using 30%. So if I use, here, I'm gonna show you. So kind of create like a fake sound, fake glowing. You can do this 30% and by, by clicking Oh, sorry, by clicking and then shrinking it and click again, shake again, clean. So it looks like a glowing light. Oh, like that, right? yeah. Uh, I missed that dot right there, but here. I'll just it kind of concentrates it. Yeah, without concentrating. It being... And then you can use screen so that create like a glowing effect. And then you can kind of like, you know, make it bigger and then overlay on the moon. So that's one way to do it. The other way, just the classic easy way, just double click on the layer and then do outer glow and inner glow, right? So outer glow, we want to make sure like, um, just adjusting, you can see a little edging right there, opacity and then size maybe make a little bit bigger. And inner glow, you want to do edge. You can do center or edge, actually, probably center looks better in this case. Change the opacity and then size about there, right? So now it looks like the moon is glowing. Look at that. And if it's too strong, you can always go back because you want more control just to dim it and oh, to do yeah. that. And then we can always create a new layer on the top of it is like the technique I showed earlier. You can do that, kind of like make the moon glow better. Make sure you do screen on blending mode. Reduce that because that's like really bright. Yeah, a little in your face. <laughs> and then we're not done yet because, um, oh, I just realized something very interesting that I did. Uh, this should be, the rock layer should be behind. Oh, yes. Because, yeah, I was like, something's missing. Something yeah. doesn't look right. Okay. Oh my gosh, look how much depth that added too, yes. just by doing that. <clears throat> and then jumping back to here, the foreground. Well, now it's mid-ground, right? Okay, let me save it. So we want to dim that, make it dark too, and then press D to go back to black and white and X to reverse it, and then using the brush on the layer max just to kind of bring that highlight back into there, right? Because th oh. that's how it glows. Probably making it even darker, and then we can create another layer just of the mist. That's like kind of going here. Change that to screen, reduce that. So it kind of looks like it's glowing around there, nothing too crazy. And then even with the foreground, that's right here, then I can click that and then reduce that lighting, you know? So kind of like give you that like glowing effect. Oh uh, yeah, that made such a difference too. I guess it's it's funny how much like you have to think about this, you know, for real life, and how much you have to how it helps to kind of study real life mm -hmm. to make these things, you know, look good. Yeah, so it's almost almost like digital painting. Okay, so anyway, yeah. so we got. <laughs> I was like, oh, the time, the time is ticking. Uh, so we're gonna do this. Select subject. Um, press Q. We're just gonna like. Oops. Wait. Let me think about it. I think it has to be that. Cause like I'm working in reverse way, so yeah. instead of like plus sign, I'm using minus. Yeah. So I can do this. Hurt your head a little. Sometimes. I know. I was like, what am I doing again? <laughs> right. So then we're gonna dim that and then kind of like put it behind the foreground, so the camo can looks bigger, uh, and behind the sand. And then obviously I'm just gonna do a quick circle in, and then there's a layer mask on there already, right? So I'm just gonna create a group, and then press it again. So now it's group layer mask and there's a layer mask on that. So then yeah. we can do what we mentioned earlier by kind of like desaturate it and then add it into like a highlight or maybe shadow to like more redness. And Look how kind like of a, ominous it is. It's not ominous, I guess. It's not like scary at all, but it's yeah, like, and then We want to clean that highlight. Well, what we can do is like we can leave that right there, but we might have to reduce it the satura uh, the saturation right because the moonlight so is like more desaturated compared to like the desert light that we had earlier. Yeah. Um, so I want to make sure moving that. It's pretty and gold, then, I guess. Yeah. So now like you got this filling. Okay. So now we have a little bit of time. Now I'll show you what we can do. Right. 
So obviously you want to save this file and then you go on to Adobe Express, right? So this is where the cool part is that you could just drag directly of your PSD file onto uh, Adobe Express. Your and, PSD file, for yeah. real. That's awesome. So you can just directly drag your PSD file to Adobe Express and then you can add it. So obviously I did it already, so I don't want to waste your time to watch the uploading screen. Um, so, uh, oh yeah. The other thing is I want to show you real quick, like text to image generator fill, you can also use it on uh, Adobe Express. Yeah. Right, so it's not, doesn't only have to be a Firefly, you can do this on here. Uh, but let's go to our file. <laughs> right, okay, so this, this is the part I was like, oh, I already added this, so you can kind of see like what is going on here, but actually I want to see, mm -mm -mm. can I duplicate this? I'm pretty sure you can duplicate Oh, duplicate it. the file? Yeah, yes, duplicate definitely. it. Uh, before. I don't know why I named before, but it's like naming it. Abracadabra, duplicating. <laughs> oh, that is so fast. Wow. It was so fast. I realized that yesterday when I was in Adobe Express. Add a timeline. It's very efficient. So you go to add a timeline, and you want to go to short layer timing. Uh, I'm just going to drag it all the way to the bottom. So this is like the final um, image and video, right? So what you want to do is to think about like how you want this animation to look like. So I don't know if there's a quick way I can delete all the animation. Oops, probably not, but I guess we can just play directly yes. like, to see what it looks like. So this is like the part I designed. So the sand is coming in. <gasps> look. And then the, the rock is rising. So you have kind of two contrasting yeah. motions. So I think it's all right. So um, pretty much. Oh, look at I didn't really do too much of animation. All I did is importing all the layers into Adobe Express. And then from there, you click the layer you want to animate it. And then you go on to uh, animation right here. So if I just delete this, and I can choose all different type of animation to make it work, right? So we can, we can change the ground to the right. And then... So I, just to clarify, <coughs> you yeah. selected the layer on the right yes. and then animation on the left and then yes. adjusted it. Awesome. Yeah, so you can you can try all this animation template and then to imagine like how you want things to move the way you want it. <clears throat> and then you can change the duration of how fast the animation will move, right? And then the directions where it's coming from. And by make sure you're on the timeline, editing timeline, show all the layer timing. And you can dragging it by decide when do you want this layer to come in, right? So if I move it to the back, that means like the front layer won't come in till like all other animation come, right? So that's the back layer. So like you see, this is where the front layer come in, right? Yes. So you can customize every single layer oh, that's and awesome. see which time that you want the best. <clears throat> I probably should show you like start from beginning, um, or at least but, you know yeah. one in action. So if I drag, uh, I'm obsessed with the moon bounce. Oh yeah, that you made so happen. the moon bounce, I I just found it in the animation right here. So I'm just gonna delete it, right? So if I use drift in, where is it? Oh, sorry, because it's not happening till here. So if I just click in, and then there's like different animation because moon rising is also really cool, right? That's yeah, where the that moon makes come sense. From, or shrink, but then when I saw the spin and then like tumble, I was like, what? Like I gotta use this. You have so, to. <laughs> what you have to do is select the layer that you want to animate it, and then go on the left side animation and click it, and then you can adjust how fast and how slow it goes. Oh yeah. Yeah, awesome. duration. The fastest, the shorter time, the fastest the animation go. The longer time, the takes longer to do that, right? So you do that. And then you can also change the rotation, and then that just make it fast, right? So just like, oh, that, I was like, this is so cool. It's I, so I playful. Got to have it. Yeah. Yeah. So in my head, I was just like, okay, the foreground is gonna come in, and then the rocks gonna rise up on the back, and then from there the sky comes down, and then uh. the moon bounce back in, right? Yeah. So I was like, this is how <laughs> so I want exciting. it. And at the very end, you do that, right? So from here, this is where it comes a little tricky. Like when you, I, I saw the ASMR, I was like, okay, I kind of have a little background of editing video and audio. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, I want to be able to bring this with ASMR. So when I first start to animate it, I have to also imagine how it was sounds like and what the timing looks like as the yeah. animation, right? Because you have to think about the sand coming, it's like the sound dragging, like shh. Right, and then yeah. you have the the rock coming out, it's like, yeah, like rumbling, yeah. and then you have the sky. What is the sky coming what is the down? Sound? Sounds yeah, like yeah. What does that sound like? <laughs> yeah. Right, like and a then, curtain. 
every time on, on my when I'm editing this, when the new environment comes in, that there should be a sound that comes with this. So yes. windy in the desert, uh, a summer sun for the for the night come down, yeah. and the moon dropping and bouncing in the desert. So I'm gonna show you guys the final uh, video that I made for this, which is do do do. And this is kind of perfect. We have five minutes left. Yeah. So it's like so, wrapping wrapping it all up in this nice pretty yeah. package. Let me know if you can hear the music. So it come in. Yeah, let us know if you guys can hear it. Okay. I wish you can hear it. You can't hear it. No! <laughs> well, you can find these on your Instagram, right? Oh, I haven't posted this one yet. So, yeah, but the you can find ones. the others on my Instagram. Yes. So kind of zooming from there. Look. Uh, thumbs up or type if you can hear the music because I want to make sure it was a very fun experiment to design this, right? So it's like... Um, added this in Premiere, find the sound library and the fact is added on there and combine it. Yeah. Um, you can also add sounds on Adobe Express, but just like for, for right now, just like soundtrack only. So this is really fun to make. And from here, this is where it goes to like schedule, right? Um, if you go to Adobe Express on the left side, there is, where is the schedule? Let me go back to the main page, schedule right here. So you could connect your social media to Adobe Express, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagrams, and everything. And this is a here, game changer. I know. Like being able to me, just upload it. I can't wake up 6 a.m. every day and just post it. It's no. tired. But no. I could schedule it to post yes. for me every day by 6 a.m. so all my audience around the world can see this. Absolutely. So what you have to do is just create, click the day you want to upload your content and then select the channel you want to do so you got Twitter even LinkedIn that's really cool and Pinterest oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you can do Pinterest that's cool I didn't so know you could do the LinkedIn there you go. yeah and then you can do post real story and then you can just drop the file onto here type of captions just like check out my Adobe live video and <laughs> hashtag and stuff and then you can preview schedule publish now pick the day you want and then you know just make it work so this is really cool and it's very simple all you have to do is just to drag the file onto it right so it's gonna like upload and do everything so i'm not gonna upload right now because i don't know when i want to post <laughs> yeah. this yet but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this quick asmr you know fun editing Absolutely. with me and animate it in adobe express you know so wait can people hear the sound did it did i hear the sound i don't know can you get nobody they do? Oh, okay, you cool. guys can yeah, hear it. Awesome. Yeah, I just keep playing on the back because I thought it was like really cute. So yeah, um, let me know if you guys have any questions and try out your own ASMR editing. I Absolutely. think it's very interesting because like, um, I always struggle trying to figure out like, how do I show my audience how simple my editing is and yeah. encourage them to try it. Yeah. But also like, what can I do, right? So doing this kind of like an uh, interesting way to break down how the layer works and the oh, stats yeah. or the hidden thing. And then now add a little animation that I don't even have to do, you know, like yeah. my own. Yeah. So I also, think, yeah. yeah, definitely try like the schedule. This is like a great tool. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's awesome how like accessible <coughs> Adobe Express has made some of these things. Like I know I saw your, um, you know, video that you posted on your Instagram of the ASMRs. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like. That just felt so beyond me, you know? Oh, thank and you. And so yeah. it's cool, which it is cool. And it is, you know, you put a lot of hard work into it. But it's very cool being able to see how, you know, anybody can do this with Adobe Express and using these tools. And so, yeah, um, I do want to quickly mention, yeah. you get to see both of us again later today. Oh, yes. Um, we're going to, yeah, we get to be together again today. We're we'll hosting you. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we have more live streams for you next. We have Manifesting Your Dreams with Art Alchemy with Amina again and Emma. And then later today, you have both of us to talk about iconography. So make sure that you stick around. Um, yeah, Ted, this is so exciting. Yay. Where does everybody find you? What's oh, yeah. the best way to uh, find you? You can find me on every social media. Just go by Ted's Little Dream. I know it sounds a little funny, but I love yeah, it. it's my project. So on um, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram is my main platform. I upload uh, yeah. every day on stories. So check it out and follow me. And feel free to DM me if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any last minute questions, you can either send those now or send them in the later chats today. And we will see you guys soon. Thank you, Ted. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye.